my grandfather took my umbilical cord and he went out and he buried it. He said, I took that cord and I tied you to the land. Our land is sacred. Our land is spiritual and it's special. This land has always been ours and it's still here as the Omaha's are. The Omaha's always camped by waterways, as did all the tribes. Streams, creeks, and particularly rivers were very, very important to our lifestyles. My name is uh, Wainema Morris, and uh, I'm a member of the Omaha, of the Omaha tribe. I have an Omaha name, uh, Mihusa, which identifies me with the Inkesabe clan. My son also has an Omaha name, and my grandchildren, they do as well. I don't know, Tracy, if you were wanting to be... Home is here. definitely here on this Omaha reservation. Well, can we stand on a hill or stand, sit in a tree? <laughs> <laughs> NICC being here to help meet the needs, you know, as the tribal college, I think is just very appropriate. What I teach is culture and traditions, and I teach about it, because I can't teach you what it is. I think I've taken almost every class that Wainema has taught. She is just so knowledgeable. I was adopted as a child. My birth mother had enrolled me as baby girl Webster, and so then I found out that I was Omaha, and I'm very proud to be Native. I started coming up here and taking classes to learn about Omaha culture and tradition. So this is generally where we meet and greet. Go ahead, Susan. My name is Tracy Mitchell. I'm a member of the Omaha tribe. My Indian name is Migli Doi, which means rising of the moon. I'm going to try to learn more of my language so I can speak it. You know, if, if one of you doesn't come forward to say no, I think it's this way. Being a teacher means a lot of hard work, <laughs> long hours, and um, I think being rewarded when I see my students actually learning something that's important to learn. We learn about Bodmer almost from the very beginning because we have to uh, look at these two Bodmer watercolors. And the first one, of course, is of the Omaha boy. You know, he's got that haircut, and depending on what clan he belongs to, we have different cuts of hair. It's like when I see him, I see my own son. So I try to get them to think about child rearing and how well cared for he is, this little boy. And now let's look at the man. This warrior here, he seems to be grieving for some reason. Even his hair, the way his hair was cut, there was significance into that haircut and the way he's got his blanket covered around his body. But that's how rich our culture is, and this young man here is part of it. They become the jumping off point for actually getting into the culture about the Omahas at a certain period in time. It just sparks a lot of generalized thinking about who we are as Omahas and our culture. I made a lot of my mom's jewelry for mm -hmm. her. I'd mm -hmm. go and buy the raw stones mm -hmm. down at Albuquerque and yeah. Dallas. Mm -hmm. So then I put it. Ijaje wui tate mede ikesebe shao wau. My name is Lonnie Moran Samqua. I am Omaha and Rosebud Sioux. I grew up with the Omaha language being my first language, but then when I was sent off to boarding school, when I tried to go from the indigenous language to the English language, I wrote a lot of stuff backwards or put it backwards, and so that's why I was labeled as special needs, so I was kind of traumatized from that. I can understand it, I know what they're saying, but for me to speak it, it's like it just gets to my tongue and it won't come out. My goal to my mother for her legacy was to teach my son Omaha. <laughs> because my mom was so, um, uh, the language meant so much to her. I want him to know all the traditional stuff, the cultural stuff. 
because a lot of the youth, you know, they don't have that knowledge. They don't seek that knowledge out. A lot of times we have to tell our young ones that we have to encourage them that, you know, that they gotta, you know, maintain our history. We have a rich culture. Number one priority of mine, and I think about them a lot, our history and the way things used to be and what, how they were before I was even born, you know. So these are the kinds of things that, that we collect. These are original allotments. And what's really important is that the Omahas were the first tribe to uh, have allotments. And that started in 1882. So we had allotments before the General Allotment Act of 1887. The archive so. is uh, very important to us because it contains the lifelong work of an individual who dearly loved this nation. He's the guy, Paul Brill, and that's the name of this archive, the Paul and Marjorie B Brill Archive. Um, because he did all this work, it was his lifelong passion. And I've kind of been with the archive since the beginning. I'm doing some of the family trees, but I'm doing more of the metadata part of it. So I hope with taking this active role of, in the archives and doing what I do, that this is here for my future. Omaha is my future. I wonder what the notice of rejection looks like. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, my relatives, that they have something because, you know, if we don't have this, then we, we cease to exist. My home is like my Nunday, my heart. It's my place where I live and reside. We're still here. We didn't go anywhere. I am an older Umahawa'u, which means I'm an older Omaha woman. And um, I feel hopeful for the future. If we can make some of the fundamental changes that um, I hope to instill and teach here at this college. When I hear Umaha, it's just like all my relatives are there, you know, and it's just that you can't even, I, there's not a word in English to describe how, how it makes me feel. <laughs>